ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الإخوة الكرام my blessed brothers and sisters in the deen alhamdulillah rabbil alameen I'm very excited that we are closing out on this book inshallah and we are going to complete another I think this may be our third or fourth or maybe third book alhamdulillah we completed together inshallah in a short time period and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one that gives success so we thank him nashkurhu uh, inshallah, before we get into tonight's lesson, we are going to, as is our ada, is our habit, go over last week's class, questionnaire, study guide number 10. Uh, number one, summarize the story related here by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu concerning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sending him on an errand. And this is hadith number nine. Abir, summarize inshallah. So Anas ibn Malik, he was sent on an errand. Yes. What did he say before that? Starting off. What did he say at the beginning of the hadith about the Prophet as an interlude to get into what he wanted to say about him? That's Esau or Yusuf. Go ahead. What did he say? What did he say about the Prophet as an firstly, before he got into the story? Salim. That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had the best of characters. He was from he had min ahsan al nas khuluqa. He was from the best of people in 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 regards to character. Now and then he begins the story. Now go ahead, Abir. So firstly, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded him was something. What did he say? Huh? He said, Wallahi lan adhab. He swore by Allah, I won't go. And he's a little boy at this time. Maybe he was just playing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he said, fi nafsi, it is within myself, what? I'm gonna go because the Prophet commanded me, right? I'm gonna go because the Prophet commanded me. So what happened when he left? What happened? Uh, Yusuf. So when he left out, he saw a group of kids his age doing what? Playing, not in the supermarket, there were no supermarkets at that time. It was the souk, which is the market. No supermarkets at that time. That came around maybe, maybe 30, 40 years ago. Alright? But that was close. The souk, that was the supermarket at that time. The marketplace. Okay? And what happened? The Prophet ﷺ, so he began to either play with them or began to watch them play. And then what happens? The Prophet does what? You got Sa'id. He grabs him by his neck gently. Does he yell at him? Does he scream at him? He laughs. Yadhaq. He turns around, he's smiling and laughing. And then he calls him Ya Unais. His name is Anis. His name is Anis. We call him Ya Unais. And we say in Arabic, this is what? Ismu Tasghir, which is a term used, or uh, it is a pattern, an Arabic pattern of the word that is used for endearment. Endearment. Uh, so it's like he's saying, my dear Anis, when he says, Ya Unais, my dear Anis. Okay? So he doesn't scold him, he doesn't reprimand him, he doesn't get angry at him, he doesn't yell at him. He... Smiles, laughs, and he says, Ya Unais, did you go do what I told you to do? And then what happened? What did he say? He said, yes. 
Yes, I'm going, Ya Rasulullah. And what did he say at the end of the hadith? We're going to get this number three. Okay, so he goes. So we got the benefit that the Prophet Sallallahu his great character with Anas. He didn't scold him. This was the benefit. Mention two things. Number two, mention two things the Prophet Sallallahu did which reflect his husn al-khuluq alluded to by Anas radiallahu anhu in the beginning of the hadith. What two things did the Prophet Sallallahu do to show his good mannerisms? Go ahead. Uh-huh. Softly put his hand on him. Uh-huh. And he smiled at him and he said what? Ya... Yeah. Oh, nice. So he called him in a nice manner, smiled, did not. You know, because sometimes we mention when you are in this position and you are, you know, a, a leader over somebody, you are in a high position over somebody, sometimes scolding them is not always the best thing to do. Especially if you have a high status and station with that person, you're very respected. Scolding is not always the best thing to do. Sometimes you can get what you're looking for with nice manners, with being cheerful. Sometimes you can, just your presence of knowing that that person or them knowing that they found out that you did, that they did something wrong, just you knowing that is enough of them to have a, a, a self-accountability that, oh, I messed up. It's enough sometimes, just to look at them. I mean, we learn this even with our children as well. You know, sometimes going and yelling, and sometimes it has a, a, a worse reaction than us, you know, being gentle, but at the same time being firm. So the Prophet said to them, he was still firm with him by saying, did you go to tell you, to go to the place I, to, I sent you to? So he didn't just forget the amr or the command, rather, he still told him and he went and did what he was supposed to do. And it was a life lesson for him and the proof it was a lesson for him is that Anas later as a grown man, he's narrating this narration. He's narrating this narration as a grown man. Now, number three, memorize the final statement of Anas radiallahu anhu describing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's character during his years of service to him. What was the final state we mentioned was in another hadith. It was not in this narration, it's in the book. What did he say? Hamid. He said, by Allah, I served the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for, for 10 years in the narration, another narration, 9 years. And what was, uh, what did he say? I don't recall that I did something. And he said, why did you do it? Or, I left every, anything off, didn't do it. And he said, you should have did this. I, why didn't you do this? Yani 10 years of serving the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said not one time that he said to us something I did, why did you do this? Or something I left off, why didn't you do this? 10 years serving the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is amazing. Yani us with our children, with those who are under us, we don't have nine days, maybe even some of us nine hours, but we don't say why you didn't do this, or why did you do this. It's a reality. He said nine or ten years. And the Arab, they weren't liars. Number four, discuss what you find astonishing about the statement of Anas al-Imalik, radiallahu anhu, describing his relationship with the Prophet Go ahead, Abba. What do you find astonishing about that? So typically in a relationship between a servant and a master, you will find that that master, you will see him get angry with you. You will see him admonish you. You will see him say, why did you do this? Why did you do that? This is normal. So what's out of the ordinary is the Prophet ﷺ being told about him that 10 years or 9 years, he never scolded Anas for doing something or not doing something. Number five, Discuss the description of the generosity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the opening statement of Anas. It's the next hadith of hadith number 10. What did he say about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the open hadith? Huh? Hamid. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was never asked for anything in, in, in which he thought that if he gave that thing to that person, it will be a means of them coming into Islam or increasing in Iman, except, except that he gave it. Except that he gave it. If anyone was to ask for anything, and he felt like him giving it to that person will be a means of that person coming into Islam, or be a means for that person, they're already Muslim, to strengthen their Iman, he will give it. He will not say no. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now. Number six, mention the example 
offered by Anas anhu in this hadith, which reflects the magnitude of the Prophet ﷺ's generosity. What did he do in this hadith that that the Prophet that, that Anas was speaking about that showed how amazing and how generous the Prophet ﷺ was, Hamid? That he gave a whole valley, he gave so much sheep that filled the area between two mountains to this man who wasn't even Muslim. He gave him a fortune. The man asked, he thought that this would be a means of that man coming to Islam and for that man's people coming into Islam. So he gave him that valley of ghanam, that valley of sheep. That's amazing. This also shows the truthfulness of the Prophet wasallam, Because the fakes of time, the fake prophets, the fake leaders, they are just putting a front on to expose or, or to exploit the people. The people who fake and act as they are religious leaders or they are spiritual gurus or they are need to be followed and some they have something special. They do that to exploit the people to take the people's wealth. They get and they strive to get in these, uh, these positions to, to have the people gain their trust to take their wealth. Instead of giving it. So the Prophet said, he will be giving the wealth. This is a sign of his prophecy. Alright? This is a sign of his prophecy. Because as we mentioned, those fakes, you don't see them giving out the wealth. You see them what? They make it up a hundred reasons for taking the wealth. Right? Even in the countries and the lands of the Muslims, you see the, 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 the guy, he's like the sheikh or something like this. He had the people coming to him day in and day out, just giving him money. Right? He's giving him money, he's getting money for making dua for them. He's giving money for touching them for barakah. He's giving money for blessing the children. He's giving money for coming to the house when they have a new, new open house. Or he's giving money, he's getting reason for making money for everything. It's just exploiting the people. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's giving the money out. He's not trying to exploit the people. Rather, he's using that wealth for the people to come into Islam. Right? And these people are taking the people's wealth. So they run away from Islam, and that's what happens. Because when you lose hope in those people who are posing as the religious leaders, you lose hope in the religion altogether. So they are means of people leaving the Islam in totality. So this guy was the one that's supposed to be the sheikh, and he's doing all this evil and wrong, and then they leave out of Islam in totality because they associate the deen with this person who's misrepresenting it, as they shouldn't, but this is what we find today. May Allah guide us. Ameen. Discuss how the man reacted to the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ and the significance of this entire affair. Sa'ad. So he goes back, he gets this charity and exactly what the Prophet ﷺ suspected and wanted and intended happened. The same thing the Prophet ﷺ wanted, it happened. And what was that? To give him this wealth, so the man will go back to his, become Muslim, and then go back to his people and call them to Islam, and that is exactly what he did. He went back, he became Muslim, and he said, Ya qawmi, aslimu, fa inna Muhammad yu'til ata alladhi la yakhshal faqa, aw la yakhshal faqar. He said, O oh people, come into Islam, become Muslims, for surely Muhammad, he gives a giving of an individual that is not afraid of poverty. He gives freely. So come into Islam. Alright? And Anas ibn Malik, عنه, he mentioned in the hadith that we narrate, that's not mentioned, this word is not mentioned in our book, that someone will come into Islam, not wanting anything except the dunya, yani tama'an, he won't want anything except the dunya, what he sees from dunya. And he said, وَلَا يَلْبِثْ إِلَّا يَسِيرًا And he would not be except a little bit of time until Islam becomes more beloved to him from everything in this dunya, if he's practicing Islam. Right? Naam. Okay. Discuss briefly what we learned from this hadith in terms of how we should treat someone who shows sincere interest in Islam. What do we learn from this? What should we what do we learn from this? Abr. No. Yes, we should use our resources for da'wah. We should use our resources for da'wah. 
We should use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us to bring people to Islam. If Allah has given us wealth, if Allah has given us money, if Allah has given us facility, if Allah, whatever Allah has given us, we should use that to bring the people into deen and we should not just hold on to it for ourselves. Because that's not the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a clear proof that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used wealth to bring people to Islam. And this is a clear proof right here. So we should do work, we should go out, we should be with the people, we should feed the people, we should help the people, we should give wealth to the people. Right? Muslim and non-Muslim, those who are in need. For the Muslim, we mentioned, what is this for the Muslim? That if we're giving and helping, what would this be means of, for the Muslim? Oh. Strengthening his iman. He knows, I don't need to go anywhere else except to the Muslims for my needs. He don't need to stand, we don't need to have our sister stand in a line in a church. Stand on the church line to go get food to put in her house. Don't that make you feel a way? When you see the sister in hijab, when they have that long line for the church, and you see the sister in hijab with her cart, going there and p- to get food, right? So she can bring back the house. Don't that make you feel a way? We should be doing this all the time. It should be us giving and helping and even overseas with those Muslims who are in need and so on and so forth, or even the non-Muslims who are in need because they're human beings. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you. لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ فِيهِ كَبَدْ Everything that has a liver, meaning everything alive, for you helping it and aiding it, Allah will give you reward for that, if it's for His sake. And if we are Muslims are in these places that are impoverished and they're not Muslim, and we come and help them and feed them and aid them, then we give them the da'wah. They come into Islam. They come into Islam. Now, so this is something we can learn from the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we should not be selfish with our resources. Rather, we should try to give and help for the sake of spreading al-Islam. And this is a tactic of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is our qudwa and he is our example. Now, anyway, today's hadith inshallah we're going to do hadith 11 and 12. Rawul Bukhari and the first hadith is like an introduction to the next hadith about the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as a general statement about the hadith, here the first hadith that's upon Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, and then the next hadith is basically a story showing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's practice of this hadith. Nawi ibn Bukhari and Anis ibn Malik radiallahu anhu قال, he said لم يكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبابا ولا فحاشا ولا لعانا كان يقول لأحدنا عند المعتبة ما له تلب جبينه Anis ibn Malik radiallahu anhu he said about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was not a sababa this is a person who constantly verbally abuses people. He was not a verbal abuser. Abuser. He used to not harm people with his mouth. He used to not make shatam. He used to not revile people and speak evil to people and verbally abuse people and put them down. This is not the way of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, wala fahasha, And he was not a person who constantly use obscene language, obscene, nasty, disgusting, low language. He would not speak low. He would not let fuhsh, yani obscene language come out his mouth. He would not use curse words. He would not use filthy words. This was not the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam, he would not use that. Wala la'ana. And he was not a person who used to invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on others. He would not say, La'anatullahi alayk. May Allah curse you. La'anatullah alayhi. May Allah curse them. He was not someone who used to invoke the cursing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on people. So he had good speech, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had good speech. And instead of the end of the hadith, وَكَانَ يَقُولُ لِأَحَدِنَا عِنْدَ الْمِعْتَبَ And he used to say to one of us during admonishment, when he would have to admonish one of us for doing wrong, مَا لَهُ تَرِبَ جَبِينُهُ What is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? May his head be covered in dirt. May his forehead be covered in dirt. What is wrong with him? May his forehead be covered in dirt. Okay, let's go back inshallah to the beginning. The Prophet ﷺ was neither sababa, neither a verbal abuser, Wala fahasha, nor was he a person who spoke fuhsh 
which is obscene, filthy, nasty language. Wala la'ana, nor was he a person who invoked the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the creation. So the Prophet sallam, had good speech. The Prophet had good speech. And he was the one sallallahu alayhi wa that said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw la yasmut. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then let that person speak well or be quiet. Let that person speak good or be quiet. This was the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if he said it, he was the first to do it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he said it, he was the first to do it. He was an example, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has also said about this tongue and the harms of the tongue, a number of hadith, a number of a hadith warning us from the severity of our tongues. May Allah protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to guard our tongues and not fall into wickedness and destroy our lives and our akhirah. The Prophet sallallahu he said to a man who asked, to advise him, وَلَا تَتَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهُ غدا, And do not say anything that you will have to make an excuse for that thing tomorrow. Do not let anything come out your mouth that tomorrow you're going to have to make an excuse for it. I said it because I was this. I said it because I was tired. I said it because I was angry. I wasn't feeling good. I was stressed out. These are the excuses that we make. All of us. We make these excuses after we say things that we regret. We shouldn't say these things. I was tired. I was hungry. I wasn't feeling good. I was stressed out from work. I was stressed out from my current situation. These are things that we say. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Do not say anything that you will have to make an excuse for that thing tomorrow. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in regards to the severity of the tongue, he said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِكَلِمَةٍ مَا يَتَبَيِّنُ مَا فِيهَا يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي النَّارِ أَبْعَدُ مَا بَيْنَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ He said that the individual will say a word. We have to watch what we say. He said the individual will say a word and he will not clarify. He will not pay attention to that word. He will not pay attention to the reality of that word. And he said because of that word, he says, he will fall in the hellfire a distance. That is longer than the east and the west. May Allah protect us. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Mu'adh ibn Jabal was asking him questions about Islam, and he mentioned Islam to him, and he told him about Islam. He said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu about the severity of this tongue. He told him about Islam and the greatest aspects of Islam. And he said, Shall I not inform you of what is the thing that combines all of the deen. Yani the last factor that will complete your religion. He said, Bala, of course, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Kuffa alayka hadha, restrain this tongue of yours. Restrain this tongue of yours. He said to him, Mu'adh said to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, wa inna la mu'akhadun bima natakallamu bi wa we be taken to account for the words that we say we will be taken for account for the things that come out of our mouth he said thakilat ku ummuk may your mother lose you may your mother be bereaved of you because this was a, a arab saying of showing importance to what's being spoken about and he said wa hal yakubbu nas he said, وَإِنَّ لَمُ أَخَذُونَ بِمَا تَكَلَّمُوا بِهِ We'll be taken to a comfort. What we said, he said, هَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسِ And will the people not be thrown on their faces or on their backs except by what their tongues have harvested, except by what their tongues have said. So the tongue is very severe. And the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam command us to guard our tongues and to restrain our tongues and to not speak except that which was good. And this was his way sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was not sababa, he was not a verbal abuser. He also said that sibab al Muslim fusuq wa kitalu kufr. That verbally abusing a Muslim is sin, sinful. And fighting him is an act of kufr, is an act of disbelief. That verbally abusing a Muslim is fusuq, it is sinful behavior. You're going to get sin for it. And fighting a Muslim is an act of kufr. It's not taking you out of Islam if you fight a Muslim, but it's an act of kufr. Kufr do no kufr. It is the lesser kufr. It's an act of kufr. So it is a severe, severe thing. Severe, severe thing. 
وَفَحَاشَ And he was not an obscene person who speaks nastiness. We should not be speaking filth. We should not be speaking nastiness. We should not be explaining things in a vulgar way. We should not let certain words come out of our mouth, no matter who says it. And we should not be listening to it either. If there are people who make music, if there are movies, if there are programs, that the people are speaking filth, we should not be listening to it either. We turn away from filth. This is of the way of the believers. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعْرَضُوا عَنْهَا And if they hear this يعني, false speech, they turn away from it and they refrain from it. So this is the way of the believer. وَلَا لَعَانَا And he was not a person who used to invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on people. And if he was to have to admonish one of his companions, he would say, what is wrong with this person? May his head be put in the dirt. And this was not even bad in itself. Rather, it was a Arab expression. To show something serious. Okay? Now that hadith is like a prelude into the next hadith, which is going to be the topic of our class. This hadith is found in Al-Bukhari on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha. And when she said, أن اليهود أتوا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالوا أسام عليك قال وعليكم She said, رضي الله عنها, that the Yehud, the Jewish people, they came to the Prophet, the Jewish people of the time of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Jewish people of Medina, not mentioning which group or which tribe of the Jewish people they were, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, Asamu Alaik. Asamu Alaik. It sounds like Assalamu Alaik. Oh, Salamu Alaik. It sounds like that, but it's not that. They said, Assamu Alaik. We're going to get into what that means. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied back by saying, Wa Alaikum, and upon you as well. They said, Assamu Alaik. He said, Wa Alaikum, and upon you. فَقَالَتْ عَيْشَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا أَسَّامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَعَنَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَعَنَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَغَضِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ She said, أَسَّامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَعَنَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَغَضِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Now what is this word, أَسَّامُ عَلَيْكُ What does it mean? It means, death be upon you. They tried to act as if they were saying, أَسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُ but they were playing with the words and they were using trickery to actually curse the Prophet Wasallam and wish death upon him. And they said instead of Assalamu Alaikum, they said Assamu Alaik. May death be upon you. And this in their language means death. The Prophet Wasallam understood that he said, he understood what they said and said Wa Alaikum. And upon you as well. He didn't increase. He didn't fall into their ignorance. He just said and upon you too. Aisha radiallahu anha, she became angry. She became frustrated and became angry and she said, Assamu alaykum and death be upon you, wa la'anakumu Allah, and the curse of Allah be upon you, wa ghadiba alaykum, and the anger of Allah be upon you. So she increased them. She returned back with their statement, Assamu alaykum, and death be upon you, wa la'anakumu Allah, and may the curse of Allah be upon you. وَغَدِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be angry with you. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to her? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ wa sallam مَهْلًا يَا عِشَى Be easy, O Aisha. Take it easy. Slow down. Be easy. عَلَيْكَ بِالْرِفْقِ It's upon you to be gentle. Be gentle. وَإِيَّاكِ وَالْعُنْفِ And beware of being aggressive. The opposite of being gentle. Well, fuhsh, and be and be aware and beware of being excessive. Call it. Awalam tasma ma kalu. She said, "Did you not hear what they said? Did you not hear what they have said?" Call it. Awalam tasma ma kultu. He said, "Did you not hear what I said?" What did he say? Huh? Wa alaykum, which means, and to you as well. أَوَلَمْ تَسْمِي مَعَا قُلْتُ Do you not hear what I said? رَدَّتُ عَلَيْهِمْ I replied back to them with what they said to us. فَيُسْتَجَابُ لِي فِيهِمْ وَلَا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهُمْ فِيَّا And I, my dua is accepted in regards to them. And their dua is not accepted in regards to me. So the Prophet ﷺ 
reply by reply back with dua against them. They made dua them, Asamu alayk, may death be upon you. He said, Wa alaykum. Right? But he's saying, My dua is accepted in regards to him, because the Prophet him, his dua was accepted. And he said, Wa la yustajabu lahum fiya, and their dua is not accepted in regards to me. Let's get into the sharh or the explanation of this hadith. Bi'idhi ta'ala. وفي هذا الحديث تخبر أم المؤمنين أعيشة رضي الله عنها أن اليهود أتوا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالوا السلام عليك. In this hadith, Aisha رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنها may Allah be pleased with her the mother of the believers she يعني informs that the Jews came to her or the Jews of that time of Medina they came to her and them and said may death be upon you. يوهمون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن معه أنهم يلقون عليهم تحية الإسلام that they're trying to portray or act as if they are giving the salam and this is the way this is their way this trickery this treachery and trickery this treachery and trickery of acting like they're doing good but doing evil right وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ الْمُسْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ When they said to them, do not make corruption in the land, they say, truly we are the good doers. We are those who rectify. Allah says, truly they are the corruptors. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they do not realize that. They are the corruptors. Naam. So they are portraying to the Prophet and those who are with, with him that they are given the salam, they are given the greeting of Islam, but really in haqiqah, yad'oon alayhim bissam. But really, in reality, they are making dua against them for death. Al-mawt wal-halaka, death and destruction. Waliyadu billah. Excuse me. Walakin al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qad fatina li qawlihim wa radda alayhim. But look how wicked these people are. Yani. You don't even be straight up. It would be better if you could at least be straight up and say what you feel, right? You're trying to play around and be treacherous and wicked, acting as if you're giving the salam, but really you're making dua for death and destruction against the best man who walked the earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khalil Allah, the close friend of Allah azza wa jal. Naam. It said here, وَلَقَدْ فَطِنَ غَلِقَوْلِهِمْ He understood what they said. They tried to use trickery, but he understood what they said. وَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِمْ And he replied back to them by saying, وَعَلَيْكُمْ And by saying, and upon you. Yani the meaning is, وَعَلَيْكُمْ مِثْلُ مَا قُلْتُ مِنَ الدُّعَى And returning back to you is exactly what you said from supplication, from dua. Meaning right back to you. So the Prophet said, Islam didn't increase. He didn't increase. He didn't go further. He wasn't excessive. He never re- replied back with, 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 with the wickedness that they have did. Yani he didn't stoop down to the level. And Allah says that. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the ignorant come with the ignorance, he repl- we reply back with salama. That which will lead to peace. Not that which will lead to, will lead to more ignorance. Allah Azza wa says in Araf, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِدْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ خُذِ الْعَفْوَ Pardon the people. Command with that which is good and turn away from the ignorant people. Don't reply back with that which is the same as them. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu did. وَكَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ And his character was the Qur'an Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِيهِ أَحْسَنْ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ To reply that, reply back with the evil, with that which is better, Allah says in Surah Silat. So if there is between you and that individual enmity, you will become like a dear friend to him. Reply back with evil, with that which is better. This is the command of Allah, and this is the character of the Prophet of Allah says, His character was the Qur'an. وَقَدْ فَطِنَتْ عَيْشِتُ رَضِ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا أَيْضًا لِقَوْلِهِمْ And Aisha understood what they said. And she replied back with, أَسَّامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَعَنُكُمَ اللَّهُ وَغَدِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ May death be upon you. And may the curse of Allah be upon you. And may Allah be angry with you. فَرَدَّتْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمِثْلِ لَفْضِهِمْ وَكَلَامِهِمْ And she replied back to them with the same type of expression that they said. And she increased as well. She increased. 
So she was excessive here. May Allah be pleased with her. فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ مَهْلًا يَا عِيشَ عَلَيْكَ بِالْرِفْقِ Be easy, relax. It's upon you to have rifq. It's upon you to be gentle. أَيْ تَمَهَّلِي وَاصْبِرِي وَتَرَفَّقِي فِي الْأَمَرِ Be easy and be patient and be gentle. Use rifq in the affair. وَيَاقِ وَالْعُفْ وَالْفُحْشْ and, be, and, and, and stay away from aggressiveness and excessiveness. This is what he said to his wife. Don't, stay, don't stoop down to their level. He's teaching her. And he was the best of teachers. And he taught at all times that needed to be te- taught. And he taught his wives. And he taught the, his companions. And any time that needed to be taught, he taught them how we should act in situations. Don't reply back with people's ignorance with ignorance. Don't stoop down to their level. People come to you in the street. People come to you with their ignorance. They want to bring you down. Don't go down to their level. Be high. Be lofty. You're going to be happy. You're going to feel good. You're going to walk around honored. Don't stoop down to the corruption of the people. Don't stoop down to the wickedness of the people. They're going to try to bring you down. But when you are with Allah, you high, you lofty. You high and you lofty. Right? Don't let that person's misery, don't let those people's corruption and their evil ways bring you down to stoop down to the level you have more to lose than them. You're on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're on the path to the paradise. Right? You are implementing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't have to go down there, don't go there. Because at the end, you might get off. You might say what you want to say. Right? But what's going to happen? You lower your character. You lower your honor. And you're angry. You feel bad. Why I had to go and do that? Right? But if you are, take the high road, if you're respectful, if you're honorable, Allah will elevate you. And the people will respect you. The people will respect you. Nah. And you're not doing it for nobody's respect, but this is of the results of when you are put through these tests and trials, doing the right thing. And not stooping down to people's levels. The result of it is Allah elevating you and you being respected in the eyes of the people, even being respected in the eyes of your enemies. Now, أي يحذر يحذرها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من التعدي عليه بمثل قولهم والعنف. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has warned her from يعني going past what they have said and increasing and in, in going more and being aggressive. Right? When she has replied back to them. Um, and in a different riwayah, in the Sahihin, in a different narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah yuhibbu rifq fil amri kulli. Here, he's telling her, be easy, calm down. Yani be gentle. Allah loves gentleness in all affairs. And let me tell you something. Yani, you may think that being gentle is soft. It's not being soft. Yani, you don't have to compromise. Say the haq. Say the truth. But you don't have to get all wild and get crazy unless it comes and unless it's called for. You being calm, saying your haq, saying what needs to be said in a gentle manner. Wallahi, sometimes that's more frightening than yelling and screaming. That's more frightening in the eyes of your adversary than yelling and screaming sometimes. Being calm, collective, saying the haq, no compromising it, straight to the point. Not having to get all wild and... Because the person who's getting wild and screaming all this, sometimes that shows that that person really doesn't have anything. But when you're calm and collective, nobody knows what to expect from you. Rather, that shows power and strength. Now, and when it's time to get down, you get down. May Allah protect us. Alright? But when it's time to do what you gotta do, you do what you have to do. Right? And when it gets to that level, if you are calm and you are gentle, right? You have all the right to do your thing. Right? And you feel all comfortable. Allah will aid you. Because you're not the one who has transgressed. Rather, it has came to you, and now you gotta handle it. And when you have to handle it at that time, Allah will give you the strength. Allah will give you the power, and Allah will put fear in your enemy's heart. Now, 
اي يحب ان يتصف عبده باللين الجانب والاخذ بالسهل الله سبحانه لفظ السلي بي كاركترايز وبين جنتل وبين ايزي فلا يكون فظا ولا غليظا سو هي از نوت هي از نوت هارش هي از نوت هارش اند باد مانرد هي از نوت هارش اند باد مانرد نعم النكست بار الحديث وان عائشه رضي عنها شي سيد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اولم تسمع ما قالوا did you not hear what they said Did you not hear what they said? She's informing him what they said. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Did you not hear what I said? Pointing to what he said, Wa alaykum. Yani, I already replied back to them. I already told them, Wa alaykum, and, and, and right back to you. I don't need to reply back and get low and say what they said. Ay hadha kan raddi alayhim. This was my reply back to him. Wal farqu bayna raddi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa raddi Aisha. And the difference between the response of the Prophet Sallallahu and the response of Aisha radiallahu anha and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam jazahum ala qadri fi'latihim duna an yughlidh alayhim fil qawd the Prophet Sallallahu replied back to them with exactly what they rep- said to him with the same thing without having to yani become rough in his speech. Wa amma Aisha radiallahu anha faqad zadat but as far as Aisha she increased and that's what we do. Somebody says something to you that you feel is harmful or evil or mean, and our response is, oh, I'm going to one-up you. That's our response. That's a lack of patience. I'm going to one-up your speech. You call me this, I'm going to call you that. You call me this, and I'm going to call you that. And that's how it goes. It gets worse and worse and worse. Who's winning? The shaitan is winning. He's laughing at us. He's laughing at us. May Allah give us patience in the times that we need patience. With dealing with people. Ameen. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. Ameen. Naam. وَتَعَدَّتْ وَجَعَلَتْ الْغِلْضَةِ هِيَ السَّبِيلِ فِي الرَّدِّ And she went past and she made the ghilda and she was يعني, harsh in her speech and her response. فَيُسْتَجَابْ لِي فِيهِمْ وَلَا يُسْتَجَابْ لَهُمْ فِيهَا And as far as the Prophet is saying, so it is my dua is answered in regards to them, and their dua is not answered. فَأَوْضَحَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَلَّا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُمْ فِي الْمُسْلِمِينَ إِذَا دَعَى لِهُدَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَّهُ يَسْتَجِيبُ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ فِيهِمْ إِذَا دَعَوْا عَلَيْهُدَ And he clarifies, صلى الله عليه وسلم, that if the Yahud make dua against the Muslims, that is not accepted, and if the Muslims make dua against the Yahud, then it will be accepted in this hadith. Naam. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen This is a clear example of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his patience and him yani, not, re- not replying back or lowering himself to the jahil or the ignorant not lowering himself to the ignorant as mentioned in Al-Furqan وَإِذَا خَاطَبُهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When the ignorance speak to them with their ignorance they say salama they reply that back that Back to that which is will lead, which, which will lead to peace, right? By the same time, the Prophet Sallallahu he was wise and he was smart and he understood the evil intention and speech, and he just said "Wa alaykum," and right back to you, and he goes about his day. And we see this in our life as well when we're going about our day and we're traveling. We have a destination. First, our destination is to Allah. Oh, and secondly, our destination is to what we have in mind, what we're going about for. We're going to school, we're going to work, we're running errands with the family. We're going to run into people. If we can avoid the situation, it'd be much better. If we can be patient in the situation that somebody may disrespect us or not, because look, Akhi, this is life and death sometimes. You don't know what a person has. You don't know what's on a person's mind. Right? If we want to be the tough guy every time, listen, that could be your life or his life. That can be your life or his life. If it turns to speech and it gets heated, that person could be holding something with them. A knife, a gun, right? You could be holding something with you, right? And when the anger starts, someone can get hurt. Someone physically can get hurt. Someone can die. And when we look back to what it was, you cut me off, right? Something petty like this, you cut me off, right? Something that can be avoided. So it's not always soft. I remember a guy ran up on me. I cut him off. I was driving a car. He was in a bike. You know the guys, they're riding their bikes. Now you don't see them. 
This guy rode all the way up to the window like he wanted to fight with me. Wallahi, I didn't see him. And I really said, I said, brother, I'm sorry, brother. I did not see you. And I was sincere. I didn't see him. This guy wanted to fight me, man. But I really, alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me to humble myself at that time. And I really felt bad. I was like, did I do that? You know, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Now, if I would have been like, man, get out of here, man. Maybe he would have tried to do something. And then I'm in the street and in this and at the police and then so on and so I kind of, I probably, and this was over a year ago. I probably still would have been dealing with that situation now. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just giving you a life example. That if we reply back with the ignorance that the people have because these people don't have nothing to lose. We worried about Jannah. We worried about pleasing Allah. People are out here just following their each and every desires and they're miserable. And they're waiting to erupt at any second. You have to understand. Some people are waiting to erupt because they're miserable and they're unhappy. And their hearts are dead. So they're waiting to erupt and they have nothing to lose. Because their lives are in shambles. They're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they made a lot of mistakes and they have to deal with them. So their lives are in shambles and they're waiting to erupt at any second. And they might be upon one of us. So we have to try. We have to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And reply back to the ignorance with that which will lead to peace. Bidnai ta'ala. Hadu wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. Naam. Oh yes, yes. I didn't, um, you can skip that. You can skip that inshallah. You can skip that. I didn't mention that. Oh, this was um, Tariba Yabinuhu. Uh, it's either, as I, me- I mentioned, if you just want to put it in now, um, I forgot to mention it. That either the person will actually, you know, have his head put in dirt, and it's an Arabic phrase, or that the person, the Prophet will be making dua that that person makes salah and prostrates, which maybe be a far out um, meaning of may his head be covered in dirt, but it is a meaning that was mentioned, inshallah. But you don't have to answer that next week because we didn't go over in the class. Um, possibly next week will be the last class for this book. Possibly next week will be the last class for this book. So try to come and try to invite others. And after that, as we do, inshallah, we're going to eat, inshallah. We're going to eat for the ending of the book. And I'm going to try to get you certificates also for finishing the book. Um, the first book, Hablullah al-Mamdud, the extended rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, and his character was the Quran. These both were two books that put together for the finishing of both of these. We try to get you certificates. So everybody come out, inshallah. Um, brothers and sisters, um, try to come out next week and then the following week probably will be the ending of the book. If not, maybe two more weeks. We'll see what happens, inshallah. But yeah, maybe one or two more weeks, inshallah. Okay? May Allah award you, inshallah, and bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our brothers and sisters who are upon Mixer LR and they're listening every week and they're benefiting and they're applying what's given off. May Allah bless you and your families and all good. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.